I'm Ta-Nehisi Coates. I'm from the Atlantic. Um, every year I come and I watch everybody give their ideas. So I was so excited to get up here and present my own. Thought I'd talk about the debt ceiling off of my brilliant solution for the housing crisis, so a trenchant critique of the Arab Spring. <laughs> but at the last minute, I was instructed to talk about the issue that truly matters for America, the saga of LeBron James. <laughs> so, <laughs> sticking with what matters. Um, my big idea is that uh, players own the game. The central thesis is basically that there's been a shift in popular support uh, in sports away from the people that sign the checks and more towards the people who are on the field. In the past uh, years in the history of sports, whenever anything went wrong in terms of labor, be that a strike or some sort of work stoppage or holdout or contract dispute, it was generally seen as the work of rich, spoiled athletes. And while that's still present, increasingly fans are seeing things from the perspective of players. Consider the current work stoppage in the NFL. I hope we have a lot of football fans here. <laughs> um, if you look at historical precedent, the last time this happened, during 1987, he had a pro football strike. And fans were polled to see who they sided with. And three to one, they went with owners. In the current uh, lockout, 19% of fans blame the players, but 32% actually blame the owners. And I think that's actually a good sign, because what it shows is that you have a more informed fan base. What you have is a broad stream of media. And for the first time, you have fans who are not only aware of the small actions of players, so the little roller going through Billy Buckner's legs, you have fans who are actually aware of the actions of owners and what they do. And so if you look at Jerry Jones, to my great dismay, uh, his awful management of the salary cap, you have a fan base that's aware of that and how that impacts the game now. But I think beyond that, there's something else, something larger that spreads throughout this society in this age of Obama. You have a less racist country. In the 1980s, uh, even then, the majority of the athletes in the big leagues, in the NBA, uh, in the NFL, were African American. And there was always this sense that you were looking at this stereotype of loud, boorish, and overpaid athletes who didn't really deserve the salaries that they were getting. But I think we're past the days when you looked at uh, whoever was talented and white and was coming into the NBA league and pronounced them the next Larry Bird. Certainly Bird versus Magic doesn't ring with the same sort of racial connotation that Dirk versus LeBron did. I don't even know if that even came up. So I think what you're looking at is a situation in which, in terms of the labor base, players command much more respect from fans. And I think that has profound implications. And going back to the King, there are obvious exceptions. I think you have to stick within the boundaries of good taste. Every rule has an, an, an uh, exception. No one objects to your right to dump your girlfriend. It's a bad idea to dump your girlfriend on the jumbotron, though, and label it the decision, even if you're doing it for charity. So I think as long as you stay within the boundaries of good taste, players will be okay. Thank you. <laughs>